from 11 Alive, your NBC station. This is 11 Alive News at 6. The FAA tells the major airlines what many passengers have said all along. Cut down on the delays and improve performance records. And maybe you're sick of the heat and smog, but a lot of people are sick because of it. Welcome to 11 Alive News at 6, where you get non-stop news and weather in the first 11 minutes. Good evening. I'm Dee Riley in for Brenda Wood. And I'm Wes Sargent. Some dangerous weather conditions once again in Metro Atlanta today. The heat, humidity, and smog all combined to make life miserable for some, particularly those folks who suffer with respiratory ailments. 11 Alive's Barbara Gauthier begins our team coverage live in Midtown. Barb? Well, Wes, this thermometer shows us how hot it is outside right now. And according to this, about 100 to 105 degrees in the sun. But it can't measure the humidity and the smog in the air. And doctors say those are the two things creating the biggest problems for people, especially folks already suffering with illnesses like asthma. It is one of the hottest summers anyone can remember in Metro Atlanta, and it is taking its toll on several segments of the population. The very young and very old are among the most at risk, but also people who suffer with respiratory problems like asthma and emphysema. It takes some nice deep breaths for me. Summer is normally a slow time of year at the Atlanta Allergy and Asthma Clinic, but not this summer. Many of our patients who normally would be uh, very comfortable at this time of year are requiring far more medications, they're using inhalers more. Uh, activities really become difficult for people. People like Jackie Grayson who says the heat coupled with the smog is making her asthma almost unbearable. I feel very tired and like there's a weight hanging over, like you can actually feel the, the smog lowering on top of you and just a lot of wheezing. Doctors say this weather is a triple whammy to people with respiratory problems or are not in the best of health. The recommendations for dealing with the heat, humidity, and pollution are the same for everyone. That it's a good time to take in a movie rather than to play that extra set of tennis or to jog your five miles. Uh, try to keep your activities down. Um, air conditioning is very important for people who are having respiratory problems compared. I mean, all of us want the air conditioning right now, but my respiratory patients really need it. And that's good advice for anyone during this blistering heat wave. Now, in addition to people with respiratory problems, doctors tell us folks who are on certain medications like beta blockers or diuretics, also diabetics and people who are bedridden are all at higher risk right now. And doctors recommend instead of the normal eight glasses of water a day that people drink twice that much during the summer months when the weather is this hot. We're live in Midtown. Barbara Goche, 11 Alive News. Thanks, Barbara. The persistent heat and smog means students attending Metro Atlanta schools have come down with a bad case of cabin fever. For many, school's just not the same when you're cooped up all day. 11 Alive's Paul Crawley took the temperature at a year-round school today. Paul? Well, Barbara, behind me, as you can see from this traffic on Buford Highway, as Barbara Gauthier said, it is more than just the heat that is a problem right now. <coughs> it is the smog. And that's one reason why many schools are keeping their children indoors, to keep them healthier. An ambulance pulled up at Atlanta's Centennial Place Elementary School this afternoon to take care of a child stricken with an asthma attack. That's one of the main reasons why the school's 528 students spend most of the day indoors. It would be very difficult to take kids out for PE right now because of the ozone and um, the smog alerts. So we would have to just do it in short spurts. As a year-round school, Centennial Place has already experienced one month of stifling summer heat. As a result, all PE classes are held inside the gym. While that burns up plenty of energy, some students still get cabin fever. I don't know. I really don't like it because sometimes I can't go outside because it's, it's really hot. Actually, it's hot outside, but it's actually freezing in our classrooms. Freezing? Freezing. It's too cold for you, huh? Yes. So we go purple, orange, purple, orange. For the most part, the air conditioning in this new school makes teaching and learning a lot more comfortable. Some students say their parents wouldn't have it any other way. I would rather play in the gym because um, it's really too hot outside and my mom told everyone I couldn't go outside anyway. And of course you got to listen to mom reporting live back on Buford Highway. Again, many of the schools that are just now starting up are finding the same problem that Centennial Place has already found. It. They're going to have to keep a lot of the kids indoors. It'll make it particularly tough for band practice, football practice, that kind of thing. But obviously, it's not something to trifle with. Reporting live on Buford Highway, Paul Crawley, 11 Live News. Thanks, Paul.
course, the kids don't want the heat, and they certainly right. don't want the rain, but we need it to wash away all that smog. We certainly need some rain. We're going to get some chances coming our way as early as tomorrow. I think a better chance as we head into the weekend. But going to school, like the middle part of August in the south, that's, that's, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. That's pretty brutal. It's really hot. It's hot out there right now. Let's take a look and see what's happening on the weather, right, weather net right now. It is so hot at Greenbrier Mall that Dear Riley said she's not going to go out there, <laughs> at least right now, until it gets below 99. That's what she said. It's 100 out there. Well, something like that. Northwest wind right around 3 miles per hour, and the humidity is at 34%. Here's our forecast for the remainder of the evening. We're going to stay in the 90s for a majority of the evening. By 9 o'clock, right around 90 to 92. By tomorrow morning, 77 degrees. And by noon, look for some sunshine and a temperature of 89. Was it under 99 or under you know, 109? The malls are air-conditioned, so exactly. it doesn't really matter. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> You're welcome. A four-year-old boy mauled by his babysitter's 150-pound Rottweiler remains in critical condition at Eggleston Children's Hospital tonight. Today, the dog's owner talked exclusively with 11 Alive's Jay Watson. Jay, what did he have to say? Well, as we know, Wes, first off tonight, Kali Nagari's condition has not changed. He is still critical. Today, we had an exclusive interview with the dog's owner who tells us he can't explain what happened yesterday. Before yesterday, Simba lived here with another Rottweiler, Nala. Before yesterday, he never hurt anyone. But four-year-old Khalif Nagari is fighting for his life tonight after being attacked by the dog. The child has a punctured lung, uh, some facial injuries, possibly some head injuries, and uh, her side has been bitten up pretty bad. Johan Jones doesn't deny his dogs are protective, but they knew Khalif well. The two families are best friends. Their children were often with the dogs. Jones can think of only one thing. I think it was from him having that cat scent all over him. Well, he chased them cats every day. Every day he chased them cats. And they say he had just put the cat down. And I guess that smell was still on him. By the time Johan's girlfriend, Karen Davis, got the dog off of Khalif, he had been severely injured. His little body, no match for the 150-pound dog. But, you know, we all take responsibility for what happened. Jones says he will put Simba to sleep. The attack on Khalif has devastated Johan, who loves the little boy. I love Khalif just like he is my son, you know. He's strong. He's going to make it. No, he's going to make it. You know, I know he'll make it. Now, tonight, Karen Davis, the owner of the property, is facing one misdemeanor charge of keeping a nuisance animal in her home. As we said before, Khalif remains in critical condition tonight. His parents and the owners of the dog are here with him at the hospital. Live in DeKalb County, Jay Watson, 11 Alive News. Thanks, Jay. A civil rights activist is protesting the decision to try 15-year-old T.J. Solomon as an adult. Solomon faces 21 criminal charges after opening fire on classmates at Heritage High School in May. The teenager's attorneys had hoped to keep the case in juvenile court. One man is now calling the case a travesty of justice. 11 Alive's Jerry Carnes joins us now with more. Jerry? First Reverend Mark L. Hutchins spoke out in support of four teenagers accused of murder and carjacking in Bartow County. Now his focus is on Rockdale County. He fully expected that when he criticized the handling of the T.J. Solomon case, it would make some people angry. He's right. Those people include one victim's family. We have come to Rockdale County to ask the students of this county to forgive T.J. He doesn't know the suspect or any of the victims. In fact, he's never talked to any of their families. It's out of what he calls the Christian spirit that Reverend Mark L. Hutchins is speaking out in support of T.J. Solomon. This is a sick society. If we will begin to make examples of children, this is nothing but a travesty of justice. Although he did not sit in on two days of testimony, Reverend Hutchins has decided T.J. Solomon is a confused child, a teenager who was crying out for help when he shot six classmates at Heritage High School. It's a case that he insists should have stayed in juvenile court. As a victim's parent, it's an, I don't appreciate it. Mike Cheek's son Jason is one of the six victims. A bullet is still lodged in the 16-year-old's leg. They applaud the move to send the case to adult court and question why Mark L. Hutchins is getting involved. Does this man have children? Okay, if he has children, he needs to put himself in our shoes and see how he would feel. Mark L. Hutchins says he's speaking out because no one else will. This eye for an eye, tooth for tooth mentality does, does nothing but leave us blind, snagged tooth, handicapped, and disfigured. While a victim's family is satisfied with the court's version of justice. Other people with the outside agendas, he doesn't count. Reverend Hutchins today asked the people of Rockdale County to forgive T.J. Solomon. Jason Cheek's father said while he does have compassion for the teenager right now, Forgiveness is hard to grasp. Wes, back to you. Thank you, Jerry.
A man accused of killing a postal worker and wounding five people at a Jewish community center in Los Angeles is now charged with first-degree murder and five counts of attempted murder. The charges against 37-year-old Buford Furrow makes him eligible for the death penalty under California law. Authorities have not called the shootings hate crimes, but one civil rights attorney says Furrow has been linked to one of the most violent anti-Semitic groups in the country, the Aryan Nation. He may have acted alone when he took his gun to target those Jewish children to shoot them, but it's the teachings of this organization that teach violence against Jews and the fear of Jews among its members that, that directly led him to do this. Furrow has told police the shootings at the center were a wake-up call to America to kill Jews, and he says he killed the postal worker because it was, quote, a target of opportunity to kill a non-white and federal government employee. The postal worker was a Filipino-American. Parents of children who attend the Jewish Community Center in Granada Hills say the fact that Furrow is in custody will help in the healing process. Last night, the parents, their children, and community center personnel looked for answers that are not readily available. Why were the children targeted? How could security be boosted without interfering with a loving environment? Meanwhile, the kids seem to be doing pretty well. Because we're praying to God, thank goodness, um, but for Bureau is in jail. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Thank you, policemen, for saving us from the gun. Because you're our friend. Because I'm scared. Parents know time will help heal fragile emotions, but to many children, the fact that Buford Furrow is behind bars is the most reassuring factor. From the mouths of babes. Still to come, a way to avoid buying a lemon if you're in the market for a used car. Later, Fred Khalil will join us live from Greenville with a report on how Jamal Anderson fared his first day of Falcons training camp. And next, the nation's airlines are ordered to improve their on-time records without delay. Crystal is, you get a lot for your money. And right now, you get even more. Eight hot, steamy crystals are just $3.69. And 12 crystals are only $5.49. So pick up a sack full for your family today. But hurry, this deal won't last long. If you're an office manager, you have one thing on your mind. Morning, Linda. The price of supplies. Hey, Linda, do you like the picture of me and my boyfriend? Oh, this is all wrong. Come on, relax. You know you're saving money shopping at Staples. Focus on other things. Linda, Linda, Linda! Save money on 7,000 office supplies at Staples. Now open in eight Atlanta locations. When it comes to customer service, you won't get the same old runaround at Jim Ellis. We go to any length to solve problems our customers may not even be aware of. Jumping through hoops, working behind the scenes, and going all out to deliver the kind of service that you deserve. Elevenalive.com is going to help you with your commute home. Every day from 2 to 5, you'll get live Dr. Radar that tells you exactly where the weather will be on your evening commute. Elevenalive.com, your guide to your ride home. There's nothing like the taste of Bluebell homemade ice cream. There's nothing like the taste of the very best. Eat all we can and we sail the rest. It's all made, homemade down home. Bluebell, the best ice cream in the country. Bluebell, the best ice cream in the country. Hey, Miss Crenshaw, thanks for letting our dog out this weekend. Oh, was that this weekend? Need new carpeting? Lowe's knows how to help. Nobody has more flooring options in stock than Lowe's. Brand name carpet, rugs, tile. Wood floors and more. At Lowe's, guaranteed everyday low prices. Plus, professional installation is always available. Golf weekend at the lake? Uh, we'd better not. When it comes to flooring, Lowe's knows.
Flying the friendly skies hasn't been that friendly for travelers this summer. A new report shows a dramatic jump in flight delays. The Federal Aviation Administration says flight delays are up 35 to 50 percent. The rising tide of complaints about delays and congestion in the system. It's wreaking havoc with the individual lives of road warriors, but it's also taking a heavy toll on corporations. So the FAA is taking steps to speed air travel by allowing planes flying the same route to fly closer together. The agency will also re-examine rules requiring planes to idle on the ground before takeoff when there are problems at the destination airport. In a moment, we'll give you the list of the airlines that registered the most and the fewest passenger complaints in the first half of this year. But first, we asked travelers at Hartsfield their chief complaints when they fly. The biggest complaint is uh, late flights, and you run like crazy to get the next one, and you miss it, and then that pushes the whole schedule behind. A lot of times I've been parked out on runways, and, uh, you know, they basically make you sit there. They don't give you drinks. A lot of times they have to shut the plane down because it's for an hour. So it's, it's not cool in the cabin, you know. The three airlines receiving the most complaints January through June were American, Northwest, and TWA. The three with the fewest complaints were Southwest, Alaska Airlines, and Delta. We all dread it. The thought that a used car we're buying or about to buy might be a lemon. Well, now there's a way that you can check for yourself on your computer. The service is called Carfax, and you're basically doing a background check on a car's history. At a cost of $19.95, you type in the 17-character vehicle identification number. That's the VIN number. And within seconds, you'll know if the odometer or title was altered or whether it's a car built from spare parts or even worse. Or possibly that car was registered as a lemon in another state and then transferred to some other state, and it loses that lemon designation. For more information about the website, log on to 11alive.com. We will provide you a link. Uh, rather, a link to Carfax. Our weather has definitely been a limb in the past couple of days. Hey, I like that. <laughs> and now we can just make, squeeze it, make some lemonade, lemonade. <laughs> yeah, to keep us cool. I think what we need to do is, uh, Wes, we need to hang out a little bit tonight, go to Brasstown Ball Mountain right there. Percy and Meteor showers are tonight. Mm -hmm. They were last night. They'll continue for the next It'll night. It'll be cooler we'll there. Be a little bit cooler and higher elevation, so we can get, and we're closer to the sky, so therefore you'll be able to see a little bit more, but anywhere between maybe 30 an hour across much of uh, the southern sky after midnight, so it's the Percy and Meteor showers. It always happens this time of year, so get out and enjoy it. Of course, temperatures are probably going to be in the 90s until you reach higher elevations like at Brasstown Ball Mountain. But anyway, let's take a look at your forecast for this evening. It's going to be a warm one. Temperatures by tomorrow morning, 76 degrees. That's kind of deceiving because we're going to stay mostly in the 90s and 80s for much of the waking hours. And West Breeze at 3 to 6, 97. We've actually inched up a degree since the last hour. It is hot out there, but at least it's a little bit dry. 39% humidity. Winds are out of the northwest at 9. Pressure's at 29.90 and steady. Today's high temperature, 98. We tied a record set 42 years ago. Back in 1957, record low, 59 degrees. That was set back in 1890. Normal highs and normal lows are 88 and 69. See what's happening across the southeast. Of course, the heat is the big factor. Up a degree from last hour at 96 now. Nine, or rather, it's 97 from 96. 96 in Athens, 101 in Augusta. They broke a record. 103 degrees they reached today. Columbus at 98 and 97 in Rome. Add a little humidity to that. The heat indices across the southeast. Heat advisory out for the central and southern part of Georgia for tomorrow. Wouldn't be surprised if the National Weather Service issues maybe a heat advisory out for the northern part. We'll be very close to that line for tomorrow as well. 103 now in Atlanta, 113 in Macon. Some shower activity in Albany sending the heat index to right around 91. That's pretty comfortable for that part of the state. In the 80, uh, 108 rather, in Wake Cross and 111 in Savannah. We need some scattered showers and rain to really knock things down. Not going to happen, at least in the immediate forecast. We see some scattered showers just a little bit to the north and to the northeast of Columbus drifting to the southeast. We know some light precipitation moving near the Dalton area and a line of showers and thunderstorms through north Alabama. They'll probably make its way into northwest Georgia before weakening just a little bit. In the meantime, here's what's going to be happening. A frontal system to our northwest is going to be a triggering mechanism along with the heat to give us some shower activity by as early as tomorrow. I think a better chance on Saturday. We'll see some moisture moving in from the Gulf of Mexico and with the instability, some scattered showers in Tennessee, northern Alabama, and northern Georgia tomorrow. But the best chance will be along the panhandle of Florida for tomorrow. 
Temperatures will be in the 60s and 70s across much of the southeast for tomorrow. Here's your forecast for this evening. A warm one, 76 degrees. West breeze at 3 to 6. Sunset tonight, by the way, at 829. Tomorrow, steamy, isolated thunderstorm threat at 96. Better chance of some showers as we head into Saturday. It's still going to be hot, though, and muggy and steamy and sultry. 95, oh my. And then as we head into the five-day, scattered showers ending on Sunday and then drying out for Monday and Tuesday. High still in the 90s and low temperatures still in the low to mid-70s. Were, were you getting tired of asking Fred when Jamal would report? Uh, you know, I think a lot of folks were. I yes. think they were, yeah. too. He was yeah. probably, too. I bet he was. Yeah. Today, we're finally saying, how did Jamal do? Fred, what's the answer? Well, he just ran and ran and, and ran and ran and ran. That's all Jamal did today. We'll hear from him when we come back with sports live from Furman University. Stay with us. Every day, there's a time when everything seems to happen at once. Those eight hours... Are you still working? Yeah, I got three more hours. ...are called the third watch. From John Wells, the producer of ER... There's a kid in here! ...comes a new drama about the people who get there first. Please, go! Police, paramedics, and firefighters... ...come together on the third watch. Sundays this fall on NBC. It's Toyota's National Clearance Event. Take action now and get great values and low financing on a huge selection of 99s. Get a great deal on Tacoma and save up to $37.50 with Toyota's extra value package and factory dealer incentives. Then check out the all-new full-size Toyota Tundra. Get the Toyota you've been wanting. Your Toyota dealer will make it happen for you. Get up. Dave Carter's dream was to own his own towing company. The bank said no. His credit wasn't up to their standards. But Worldwide said yes. So pick up your phone and call us at 1-800-807-YES. We're waiting to loan you the cash you need for any reason. And Worldwide doesn't care how bad your credit is. Because that's what we do better than anyone else. We loan cash to homeowners with money problems at 1-800-807-YES. Worldwide Financial. Cash fast when you need it most. In this city, things happen fast, and when news breaks, you can be a part of the 11 Alive News Team. Star 11, just three keys on your Bell South Mobility phone put you in touch with the 11 Alive Newsroom. Star 11, sign up now. Be a part of the 11 Alive News Team. One hospital created the Southeast's first on-site wellness center. One hospital surgery center was the first to offer the most advanced surgery capabilities. One hospital has tripled its overall size and scope of services in the last five years. One hospital is dedicated to providing all your health care needs. It's the Cab Medical Center. More than medicine. Atlanta's Honda Giant, Ed Boyle's Honda, is on pace to set an all-time sales record to make sure they hit their goal. Ed Boyle's Honda has specially priced every Honda in stock. Right now, during the 99 model year clearance, brand new 99 Accord LXs are $15,995. Save over $3,600. These 99 Accord LXs are well equipped. $15,995. Over 450 Hondas available. Ed Boyle's Honda, the right choice for over 50 years. Sports is brought to you by Ed Boyle's. All right, Jamal got the big bucks. Do you think the coach just ran him ragged today? <laughs> Probably. Is that what happened, Fred? Yeah, well, it did. You know, and it's funny because Coach Reeves did not actually uh, supervise the running out here on the practice field. It was trainer Ronnie Medlin. And afterwards, you know, we were talking to Coach Reeves. We said, hey, you didn't run Jamal that hard. He goes, that's because I didn't run him. If I was there running him, it would have been a lot worse. But Jamal, uh, we'll show you in just a second spent how he spent the afternoon. But tomorrow night, Georgia Dome, 730. It's the Falcons' first preseason game of the year against the Detroit Lions. We take a look at the practice from today. And it was a typical day before the game practice for Coach Dan Reeves and the Falcons. It was just a basic walkthrough, kind of making sure that everybody knows where they're supposed to line up, where they're supposed to be in certain situations. As for Jamal Anderson, he spent the day running. Jam agreed to that new deal last night. He's not going to play tomorrow night. There's no way he could be ready. The question, though, I, on many people's minds, you know, Jamal does not live here in the offseason, so he's not part of Dan Reeves' offseason workout program. Is he in tip-top shape? 
Here's Jim. I weighed today uh, 236 after breakfast, lightest I've ever weighed in. Uh, I've never reported to camp under like 238, 239, so I knew that was going to be a sticking point. I'm always in shape, and I know uh, being away in the offseason, I've always got to prepare myself to come in here and play. And uh, coming in that way today, that's, my, that's like what I play in the regular season. So we still got a month. So I know in this heat, it's <laughs> going to be a problem losing that pound. Man, no kidding. He might have even lost a few this afternoon. Uh, here's a breakdown now of Jamal Anderson's jamming new deal, if you will. Seven and a half million dollars to sign. His first year salary, $1.9 Then in the year 2000, $1.1 million in base salary, a $500,000 roster bonus, and a $500,000 workout bonus in 2001 his salary goes up but notice that the bonuses are still there same for 2002 a five million dollar base salary again half million roster half million workout bonus and really 2003 is never going to happen because uh, the falcons are likely not going to pay jamal a five million dollar roster bonus uh, that back end of the contract is basically to spread out the signing bonus uh, for salary cap reasons. Too complicated to get into now, but just suffice it to say they will never get to that year. His contract will probably be redone or he will be out of here long uh, before they pay that $5 million roster bonus. But the key note as we come back live, of, of all that, you see that $500,000 workout bonus in there. That is Dan Reeves' way of make, sure that, make sure that Jamal Anderson's fanny is in Swanee in the offseason working out with his teammates and being a part of Coach Reeves' offseason workout program. Now let's get to the Mets this afternoon. They pulled even with the Braves by completing a sweep of the San Diego Padres. Highlights now, uh, Daryl Hamilton from Shea Stadium, a home run to make it 3 to nothing. Then Roger Cedeno also homered, and the Mets win 9-3, to the final score. Uh, now the Braves... Uh, swept the Astros last night as well. So the Braves swept the Astros. They have the night off and the Mets win. So it is a dead even heat now in the National League East. The Braves head to L.A. tomorrow night. We'll have more on Jamal Anderson tonight at 11. For now, we're live at Furman University. Thank Thanks. you, Fred. Through at 11, a new report shows some stunning statistics about how many guns are sold throughout the metro area. Plus, a metro Atlanta high school student comes up with a unique way to stop school violence. Learn all about it tonight at 11. Got some rough weather to tell us about? Yeah, in the southwestern part near Columbus, just outside in Merriweather County, you can see it almost by our first alert, uh, just a little bit south of LaGrange area. Merriweather County is under a severe thunderstorm warning until 650. That system is moving away from the metro area and moving to the southeast quickly. But if you're traveling to Columbus tonight or down I-85, then that direction you might encounter a shower, some hail, some strong winds, so please be careful. We need that rain, certainly could use it. All right, thank okay. you, Paul. That's 11 Live News at 6 for this evening. Thank you for joining us. NBC Nightly News is next, and we'll see you back here at 11. Have a good evening. The 99s must go during the end of the model year closeout here at Atlanta Toyota. That's right, folks. We have over 100 